This lecture is for quantities in chemistry, and in chemistry, we use what is called the mole. So if you've taken a chemistry course before, I'm sure that you've heard of it. If it's been a while, I'm definitely going to give you a refresher, but the conversions between mass and moles and particles and moles are things that you're going to need for the entirety of your Chem 161 and 162 experience. So this is a really important concept. So first of all, why do we need this thing called the mole? Well, it's for measuring quantities of things. So just like if you were, I've got some examples down here, um, measuring the number of eggs that you have, you would go by dozens. Uh, the number of sheets of paper you have, you would go by reams because a ream is 500. Or stamps, you would go by books of stamps because that's 20 stamps. Uh, in a very similar fashion, the mole just stands for a specific amount. Um, so you can use it to calculate anything, but it really applies to molecules. Okay? So the mole really allows us to measure the mass of something because I can't actually measure the number of particles in a substance. So if I gave you a sample of carbon, for example, you wouldn't be able to tell me how many particles are in it if you were in the lab, but you could tell me its mass. Um, so it, since we measure the mass in the lab, not the number of particles, we use the mole to convert between mass and number of particles because things really react on the particle level. So that's why we need to know how many particles or how many moles there are um, in order to do a reaction and predict like how much you're going to make and stuff. So um, what is the mole based on? Well, it's based on one atom of carbon-12. So carbon-12 uh, would be a carbon with six protons and six neutrons. Uh, we call that one exactly 12 atomic mass units. So this is where we based the mole. Um, so one mole of carbon-12 is exactly 12 grams. So then we use that to find the number of particles in that mass ends up being 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which is a number you may be familiar with, but this is where we get the mole and then we were able to apply it to all of the other um, elements. So um, before you get going with the mole, uh, you do need to know what the units are for molar mass. Okay, so molar mass, mass of a mole. Um, so I've got FW and MW. Remember, FW means formula weight. MW means molecular weight. MM is molar mass. These are just my abbreviations, um, but they're all the same thing. Okay, formula weight, molecular weight, molar mass. Um, we have been up until this point saying that the mass of like an atom is in atomic mass units. Well, if atomic mass units, 12 atomic mass units for carbon is the same as 12 grams for carbon, and AMU is the same thing, same unit, as grams per mole. Okay, so all of those numbers on the periodic table, the ones with the decimal places that are the masses, um, have the unit of AMU, but also are grams per mole, because that is the mass of one mole of each of those substances. Okay, so this unit is going to be very important. Okay, so what is a mole? I already mentioned this number. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or particles or little things, right? If you're talking about even this pen, the number of atoms in this pen is astronomical, right? It's going to be a number with some very large exponent over here. So one mole, once we've figured out the number of particles in 12 grams of carbon, is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So one mole of any substance is going to have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. This is also known as Avogadro's number. So since we know that one mole means this many things or this many particles, we can use this equivalence as a conversion factor, just like any of our other conversion factors, right? I can put one mole over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, or I can flip it, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles over one mole. And then I can use these to convert between moles and particles, moles and atoms, moles and molecules, anything that's really, really tiny. Okay. Now, we don't measure moles in the lab. We measure grams in the lab. So we also have to have that conversion from grams to moles so that we can actually figure out the number of particles. And so particles um, are teeny tiny things. So anytime I say particles, it could be atoms or molecules. Okay. If I ask you how many particles are in something or how many atoms or molecules, uh, your number should be very large, right? You should always have something in scientific notation with a very large exponent. Okay, so always make sure your answers make sense. Um, particle numbers should always be really big. Okay, so this is one conversion factor we get from the mole from this. The other conversion factor we use is that one mole is equal to 12 grams of carbon. So this is carbon's conversion factor. Or I can write it as 12 grams of carbon is the same as one mole of carbon. 
And you can do this for any element, but different elements have different masses. So if this was nitrogen, for example, this number would be 14 because that is the number um, of its mass on the periodic table. Okay, so this is the molar mass or the mass of one mole that can be used as a conversion. And this is Avogadro's number that can be used as a conversion. So just like our other dimensional analysis problems, we're gonna be like, okay, where am I starting? Where do I need to go? What do I need to do for my conversions in between to make my units work out? Okay, so these are just conversions using new numbers. Now, some people don't really like the dimensional analysis approach, and that's okay if you're not a cancel the units person. Um, it really helps, especially if you have to take M162. But if you're more of like a visual person and the math is kind of getting you lost, I like drawing this. This is called Mole Island. Okay, so we've got three islands, Mole Island here, Particle Island here, and Mass Island here. Hi, right, so if I'm talking about mole island, my unit is obviously going to be moles. I'm actually going to put that on here if it lets me. Oh, maybe. Okay, so anytime you have the unit moles, that means that you are starting on mole island. Anytime you have the unit grams, that would be starting on mass island. And anytime you have the units of particles, so that could be atoms or molecules, right, anything that's teeny tiny, you would be starting on particle island. So what you want to do is kind of follow this layout that I've got here. Now, unfortunately, you can never convert straight from particles to mass because all we have for mass conversions is molar mass, the mass of a mole. So you cannot go directly here. However, you can always go through mole island. So if you're starting with a number that is not in moles, I highly recommend always converting it to moles because we're always going to have to go through mole island. So the way I have this set up is that if you're going toward moles, you're going to divide by a number, mass divide by a number. If you're going away from moles, you're going to multiply by a number. Now, of course, if you're doing the particle conversion, you're going to use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And if you're doing a mass conversion, you're going to use whatever the molar mass of that thing is, which you can find on the periodic table. Okay, so this is just kind of a visual. If you'd rather draw this on the top of your exam and use that, you are welcome to. However, I will be going through how to do this with dimensional analysis, um, because again, that's really helpful in any type of problem solving. Okay, so if I asked you to convert each of the following amounts um, from whatever I give you on the left to whatever I give you on the right. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't get the answer yet. I'm going to walk you through it. You are always going to start with whatever number I give you in the problem, just like any conversion problem, anything at all. I've got 4.85 grams of ALOH3. Now, personally, I always like to write my units because then I can make sure that my units cancel out. If you don't write your units, you might get lost and forget a step. Okay, so I have grams of ALOH3 or aluminum hydroxide. Okay. I want to get to moles. So what is the conversion between grams and moles? Well, that is molar mass. If you're like, where did you get that? It's one of these two up here. These are our two conversion factors. It's either this one or it's this one or like the opposites. Okay. So if I have grams, I have to use molar mass. That means I have to know the molar mass of this thing. Okay. So I have grams of aluminum hydroxide. So I find the molar mass of aluminum hydroxide. I add up aluminum, three oxygens and three hydrogens. It's 78. Now, notice I put the 78 grams of aluminum hydroxide on the bottom and one mole on top because this is the mass of one mole. So now my units will cancel out and I am left with moles. So I have 0 0.0622 moles of aluminum hydroxide. And all I did to get that number was 4.85 divided by 78. Okay. Now, you could have also done that by looking here and you're like, oh, I have grams. I want moles. So I'm going from grams to moles. I need to divide by the molar mass. Also fine, but no, when it starts getting to be multi-step, that can be a little difficult. All right, here I've got moles of PBI2 or lead to iodide, and I want grams. So grams, oh, I want grams, okay? I have moles. So we're starting with moles, we're going to grams, means I need to multiply by whatever the molar mass of that thing is, okay? So I start with my number from the problem, 1.48 times 10 to the negative third moles of PBI2. So I need moles down here, and the molar mass of one mole of PBI2, when I add them all up, is 461.01 grams. So I'm just going to do this times this, and I get 0. 0.682 grams of PBI2. All right, so you guys try C and D. Go ahead and pause it here, and then check your answers.
All right, so what I've done here, I've got 7.15 times 10 to the 22nd molecules. So I'm starting with molecules. And how do you get from molecules to moles? You use Avogadro's number. So I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules down here, which is one mole. But that would only get me to moles. I actually want grams. So now I have to go to grams. So one mole of this stuff is 80.06 grams because that is what one sulfur and three oxygens is when you add them together. So now I'm gonna type this in my calculator. I'm gonna do this guy, 7.15 times 10 to the 22nd, divided by, and you're gonna wanna use parentheses here or the EE button in your calculator, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, because that whole thing has to be in the bottom, and then times 80.06 grams and you'll get 9.5. Now I went ahead and rounded to three significant figures because the number that I started with also had three significant figures. D, I didn't even show you the work. Hopefully you got 5.33 times 10 to the 21st. I had grams, so I had to go from grams to moles using the molar mass of this guy. And then I, since I had moles, I needed to get to molecules, which are the teeny tiny things, the particles. So then I had to multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Similar to C, but backward, okay? Um, if you need help with your calculator or something, let me know, I'm happy to help. Now, part E is a little bit more difficult. If you took 120, um, this was called, we called this the component within. So if I'm looking for the amount of something within a molecule, so like if I was looking at D, maybe I just wanted to know the nitrogen atoms, not the whole thing. Okay. So again, you always start with whatever number I give you. I have 4.50 times 10 to the negative third grams of C6H12O6. This is where your units are going to be really important. Okay, I have grams. Um, I want, it looks like atoms. So I want to get all the way to particles. So first to get from grams to moles, I use the molar mass of glucose. It's this many grams per one mole. Then I need to get from my moles to my molecules of glucose, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And then I just want to know the hydrogen part. Okay, so then I would go, well, each molecule of glucose has 12 hydrogen atoms. So I would end up multiplying by 12. So it would be this number, divided by 180.156 times Avogadro's number times 12. Now you could have put that part in here too. It doesn't really matter, um, but your answer should be 1.81 times 10 to the 20th. Again, should be a big number. It's the number of atoms, okay? Um, so this is like if I'm looking for one part of a whole molecule, you have to take into account that there's 12 hydrogens in each molecule. 